if you have something to say, if you want to speak some words, please take the stage. Um, and otherwise, we'll let the, the bride and groom, grooms give us a little speech, and then we'll uh, you can take off whatever you want or stay for a bit. It's up to you. So, does anyone want to take the stage first? Up Yagi to does. To go, Yagi. No, Focus. You're up, Yagi. Alright, so everyone, I'll, I'll go first then, Sorry. I guess. <clears throat> I was just chewing my soup. <laughs> Leftover bit of tomato <laughs> in soup makes me chew. <laughs> yeah, the skin's right, the best everyone. part. <laughs> thank you all for coming. I like to thank the bad cuts for hosting this wedding. Me too. So definitely. <laughs> Yay. But, um, but just about our... Our, our, our people of the hour, uh, while Dr. Warwick uh, has been part of our lives for a lot uh, shorter time, Isaac has been part of our lives for a, you know, a good a good few years. See, believe it or not, Isaac used to live with us bad cunts in our previous place. We helped raise, we helped raise him and turn him into the man he is. When we met him, he was just a boy, but now he's a man. He's gotten hitched, and we couldn't be prouder of you, mate. I'm glad that you took our advice, and look what happened. You are uh, you're now married, thanks to us. You remember what Thank we you, told you? I I I do remember. Yeah. Uh, don't forget it. Don't forget it. It's for your ears only. Of of course. And I, I'm sorry that Pops couldn't be here. I know you and him are used to get along, but unfortunately he's stuck in the drywall and we can't get him out. So we just throw sardines down there every now and then to feed him. <laughs> <laughs> Ho hopefully, hopefully one day he'll be uh, free of the walls. Hopefully one day. Um, I'd like to just take the time to thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks for drinking all our drinks and eating all our food. First of all, uh, thank you. Warwick for taking this this young man off our head. Um, yeah, he's all responsibility now, not ours. Uh, and I would like to make it clear when he lived with us, he had all limbs and his both eyes. And then ever since we went to Old Car, look at him now. So clearly he was safe with us. All right, thanks guys. <laughs> uh, you know he's not wrong. All right, Jack, you're up. You're the best man. You got to give a speech. Uh, okay. Get the fuck. Hi, everyone. It's me, Jack. Who are you? Hey, Jack. Hey, other me. Wait, who's other me? Is one of my clones here? Oh, hey, Gloria, you're awake. Just in time. You're up next. Uh. Oh, all right. Uh, sure. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Yeah, it was kind of just dumped at me as well. No, it's, it's all right. I was only told I was the maid of honor right before the wedding, but I'm good to and go. And you didn't have a speech prepared. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Jack. I didn't have a speech prepared because I'm not good at this kind of stuff. Hi, Morgan. Fancy right. seeing you here. Hi, Jack. Hello. Hi, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hello. Random people. Morgan, can you believe it? like over a year ago you were this whiny little bitch who just couldn't have the bust of the courage to ask you out the date? Now who you are? <laughs> Getting married? Holy fuck. How things have changed. Awesome. Believe it or not, when I first met Morgan, right, he was such a little pansy. He wouldn't even touch a drip, drop of alcohol. Now he's sitting there fucking doing fucking kegs of beers and shit. Man, you should have seen him at the New Year's Eve party, eh? Like he was fucking kicking it back like that nothing. Not to mention, he wouldn't throw a punch either. Oh man, like, we tried to get, like, convince him to punch on with some people. He wouldn't do it. Then I saw him at Mr. and Mrs. Marshmallow's wedding. He fucking knocked some dude out, eh? Like, holy fuck, Morgan. I've never been more proud of the man that you've become now. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Fucking do it. Even though you held me up and had your goons beat me up, I held no resentment against you. But no, you've done well. Mm. Your kids have done well. Everything that keeps getting fucking thrown your way. I mean, holy fuck, it took so long to get these. You should have. I had to almost put a gun in their face for them to go on a date. 
You wouldn't believe how fucking long it took him just to go on their first fucking date. That's not your fault, though. There's so much shit that just keeps going your way, and every time you keep fucking overcoming it. So good news, now you've got someone to rely on to overcome these obstacles together. And now I'm going to pass some advice that, uh, the, the, that my father once told me at one of my weddings. When? When? Where? Life is like a penis. It's hard, but it won't always be hard. <laughs> 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 and if it's hard for more than four hours, see oh. a doctor. <laughs> Good thing you're married to one. I feel like I'm making a When life stops getting hard, take Viagra. Hey. <laughs> oh, you can do that. That's, that's always been our motto. When life's hard, do drugs and alcohol. I, I, I struggled yeah, finding yeah, you a I'm gift, Morgan. Uh, 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 I struggle to find your gift. There's only one thing I, I could think of. It's very personal to me. So I'm going to give this to you. Oh, God. Oh, oh I thought... Oh. oh, that's a big gift. Oh. Had to beat. Uh, no worries. Are you sure, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Holy fuck, look, it's one of my clothes. Yeah. Where did you get here? <laughs> By wearing that hat, mate, you are now. You're always unofficially part of the mad cunt, but now you're officially a bad cunt. Congrats. And I suppose by extension, you are too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank All right, you, would the maid of honor like to give a speech now? You're up, Glory. I will. My very best. Tipsy and unprepared, but I got words for Claire over there. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you know this, Claire, but you were one of the first people that I actually ever encountered in any significance on this island. Uh, I believe my little dinghy made landfall here, well, broke apart on the rocks here, about three days before one of your big island-wide meetings. And uh, I went to that because it sounded interesting, and I was nothing about anything. Uh, I got there, and you started talking about cults and refrigerators and flowers. And uh, I thought, who is this crazy, smart son of a gun, this teenager, talking to all these people on the island about refrigerators and flowers? <laughs> and... <laughs> I didn't really uh, encounter you again until at least a month later when you came by the creek. Um, and fa fairly quickly we, we developed uh, what I feel is a fast friendship. Um, I... I'm not going to cry. <coughs> you are an outstandingly beautiful, talented, and intelligent young woman. And... Uh, I like that you find joy in the little things in life. Keep doing that. It's important. Having this fella by your side is going to make that even easy. Y'all got to keep remembering to be smart and, you know, competent and the, the doctors and directors that you are, but, but also don't forget to live. Enjoy each other. And putting together weird meetings about refrigerators for the betterment of people, but somebody's got to do it, and it's sure as hell going to be a lot easier to do it together. Well. <laughs> so, I, I wish nothing but the best for y'all, and uh, I'm excited to see the things that y'all are going to do together for this island and for the world, honestly. Y'all are scary smart folks, <laughs> and um, I'm proud to know you proud to be your friend and so honored to get <coughs> certainly not going to hey, cry right. y'all got a lot of great things ahead of you and uh well I just hope to get to kind of 
be there and see what those things are. Bask in that wake. Congratulations, Ethan. <laughs> Huzzah! Thank good you. speech. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Hey. Good speech. All right, Francesco, oh, you're up. I forgot to say something before. To now, before somebody else goes, I forgot to say something. All right, I'm going to tell the story of when I first met uh, Dr. Candlewick here, all right? So, I don't know how many of you were here, <laughs> but there was a race event hosted by Esprit over at the racetrack to the northeast of here. Did anyone go to this? Yeah, I was there, Titty. Remember? I was there. Okay. Well, I I don't know if you know anything about us mad cunts, us Australians, but it's not legal for us to drive because we get headaches, probably from all the alcohol, but just the climate and everything, we can't drive. So, I thought it would be a great idea for me to get behind the wheel. So, we waited for our race, and oh, like, I'm not going to lie to you, we totally planned to steal one of the cars, but you blocked off all the ways off the racetrack. Um, but... but Anyway, so we started the race, we went around the corner, and by the time we got back, the car was on fire. So I decided to do donuts until I crashed into a wall in front of all the Esprit security and with their guns out. I was asked if I was on any drugs and alcohol. I said, not just that, mate. I also huffed a, a melted McDonald's toys before I got behind the wheel. But anyway, as I crashed it into the wall and absolutely right off that car as you do uh, I got surrounded by the Esprit security and they were, they were they were about to kick me out or string me up, I don't know I was about to get in trouble, they all surrounded me and that's when I first met Dr. Warwick here and they were just, when they were deciding what to do with me, someone got executed like 10 metres away from me, so all the security guards went away from me and I got away with it that's my first interaction with Dr. Warwick here Little did I know it would be the start of such a beautiful friendship. All right, I'm going to get Francesca so she can give her speech, but uh, if anyone wants to go in between that, feel free to take the stage. I would like to say something, if I may. Of course you can, Yogi Bear. <laughs> I would just like to say that uh, Hideo and I are very honoured to be invited to participate in your union today. And it's very, very good to see in such a terrible world, like we're having good time and a good laugh here, but we all know out there is a very dangerous place. A lot of uh, terrible times and a uh, lot of terrible things that happen out there. But in the Japanese belief, we have what we know as a kintsugi, which is taking something that is quite damaged, and I believe pretty much everybody here in some way has probably been damaged in some way by the way of the world. Nah. Uh, my mom didn't thing love me. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that is so beautiful to see into all, all the turmoil of the world, all the threats and horrors that are out there, as uh, Dr. Warwick herself knows, they are also sorts of strange anom anomalies and strange creatures and terrifying things out there. Even just, you know, you can get salmonella and cholera and all kind of terrible things. But through all these terrible things, there's still beauty in the world. And one of the most beautiful things you could ever have is a union of two beautiful souls who have come together with a idea of the fact that there is hope in the world. And just the fact of getting married, it tells you of your idea of hope. You know that you've got a future together. And so like Kintsugi, you too are like that. You are taking something that is, uh, you know, could be seen as damaged in some way and you repair it with your love. Your love is a union and a bonding of gold. And Hideo and I understand this because we, we are uh, wed as well. We see uh, marriage as a beautiful, very important thing in these days. Not many people do it anymore, and it's very important to show your love. And there's nothing stronger than love in a world full of hatred. So we wish you all the very best, and we're so proud of you 
as two young, beautiful, kind people who are out there giving all you can to help others in the world, to share your love in front of everybody. We are more than honored to be here today. And we wish you the Kami's blessing for the brightest future together. And we say arigato for letting us share in this with you today. Thank right. Hold on. Not Francesca, you're up. <laughs> hey, Ryan, if you don't know, this is Caesar Salad's girlfriend. Yeah, we made a match for him in heaven. Um, yeah, <laughs> as you can see, uh, she's quite beautiful. She's got a nice uh, child-bearing hips and everything. Uh, she's a bit shy. I may have to translate for her. Um, but if you just give her the four, we'll just see if she has a go. Such beautiful hey. words. Everyone give a round of applause. Oh, oh could are you with yeah. me? Well, yeah. Nice yeah. work, Francesca. <laughs> hey. That yeah. was beautiful. Truly. I'm glad this young couple was here today to hear that speech. That's me. Uh, <laughs>